hello guys you're welcome to this channel in this video we are going to look at some physics calculation questions as preparations for our forthcoming examinations now if you know that this video you like them please make sure you subscribe to this channel and also turn on the notification button so that you'll be notified whenever we post a new video now the first question is a very simple one but then um it's a playful one also because I used my name to actually answer the question. Now the question says, Emmanuel Miller jumped out of the window. What has he done? What has he done? Now we have option A, walk. Option B, exercise. Option C, picnic. And D, playing. Has he played? Has he picnicked? Has he exercised? Or has he walked? Now the, of course the correct answer is what? Is walk. Walk is what? The formula for walk. Say walk is force times what? Distance. Okay. Now, before he can jump, he must have actually applied some force, which is the weight of his body, mg. Okay. That is force. Then he jumped a particular distance because when he jumped out of the window, he will cover some distance. Are we getting it? So he has walked. And hence, the correct option to this question is walk. Okay. Now, let's look at the next. An object of mass 100 kg. What is the mass of the object? 100 kg. It's released from rest. It means the initial velocity is zero. And for straight distance, the distance is given as what height? 10 meter. What is the work done by gravity? Now, I've told you that work done is force times distance. Now, work done by gravity. It means that the acceleration we are talking about g and we know that force our work now because to force is what let's say work work will be equal to what is force force is mass times acceleration now but in this case they say work done by gravity so it means the acceleration equation should be what acceleration due to gravity which is g so we change a to g then times the distance it travel which is the height okay now our work done would be equal to what was the mass of the body mass of the body is 100 kg now g has a value of 9.87 9.8 but in this case we are going to take it as approximate value of 10 meter per second square time g is 10 times the height is 10 meter which is the distance and then when you calculate this 100 times 10 times 10 we give us 10,000 and this is in joule 10,000 joule is still the same thing as 10 raised to the power of 4 joule because thousand means 1 2 3 4 so you can put 10 raised to the power of what 4 joule and that makes option c the correct answer to this equation now let's look at the next the work done when a perpendicular force is applied to a body in horizontal motion is the work done when a perpendicular force is applied to horizontal motion is now when you say perpendicular force let's say the motion is in this direction the motion is in this direction now the perpendicular force is acting in which of the direction in this direction are we getting it now what will be the work done now, Newton's second law of motion states that the force applied is directly proportional to the change in momentum. V1 minus V, V minus U all over T, and it is in the direction of the applied force. F is equal to V1 minus U all over T, still the same as what? MA, which is F is equal to MA from Newton's laws of motion, second law, especially. So, it means that you must apply it in the direction. Are we getting it before there will be a change in momentum? If you don't apply it in the direction, then there is no change in momentum. Change in momentum is zero and the end for the force applied will be zero. And of course, we know that work done is force times distance. Are we getting it now? Then if the force is zero, it means distance also will be force times distance will also be what zero because anything times zero is zero. So W will be equal to F 
times 0 and everything times 0 will be equals to 0. Now, another way to look at this is W is equals to what? F times distance cos what? Theta. Now, if the force is applied perpendicularly, it means that the angle between is what? 90 degree. Perpendicular angle means that the angle is what? 90 degree. Perpendicular angle means that the angle is what? 90 degree. So, our W will be equals to F times distance cos 90. Now, if you know, if you press, press cos 90, let's try together. Press cos 90 in your calculator. What will it give to you? Cos 90 in your calculator. That will give us 0. Okay? So, this become F times D. Cos 90 is 0. Everything times 0 is 0. So, our work done will be equal to what? 0. So, if you want to look at it from the point of calculation, you see that it will give you 0 because the applied force and the motion are at 90 degree because they are what? Perpendicular to each other. Okay? So, everything here will be what? 0. That means 0 the answer to this question. Now, the next. Determine the kinetic energy of a gear of mass 40 gram running with a velocity of 3 meter per second. Now, formula for kinetic energy is what? Half mv square. Formula for kinetic energy is what? Half mv square. Now, the mass was given as how many gram? 40 gram. The velocity is what? Is 3 meter per second. Now, let's substitute in and see what it gives to us. This becomes kinetic energy is equal to the mass of 40 gram, we say, or half first, times the mass of 40 gram, times V square is 3 square. Now, when this cancel this, it gives us 20. So, this becomes 20 times 3 square is what? 9. 20 times 9 is what? 180 joule. So, the correct answer to this question is 180 joule. Correct answer is what? 180 joule. Correct answer is what? 180 joule. Now the next. A ball of mass, 0 0.4 kg. Mass is what? 0 0.4 kg. Is dropped from a height of 30 meter. Height is what? 30 meter. Determine the potential energy on impact to the ground. Determine the potential energy. Now, the formula for potential energy will tell us what to do is MGH. Formula for potential energy is what? MGH. Formula for potential energy is what? MGH. So, the potential energy is equal to 0 0.4 times G is acceleration due to gravity and it has a constant ma uh, value of 10 meter per second. So, we have times 10 times the height is 30 meter. So, potential energy is equal to, when you multiply these two together, it's going to give us the following answer, which is 0 0.4 times 10 times 30, which is 120 joule. So, the correct answer to this question is 120 joule. Correct answer is what? 120 joule. So let's go to the next question. Now the next question says gravitational electric field are sometimes referred to as conservative force field because work done on this field depend on the position only and not on the path. Gravitational electric field are sometimes referred to as conservative forces force field because work done on this field depends on the position and not on the path. Now you're going to understand this better when you are doing gravitational and uh, when you are doing um, electricity electrostatic in your second semester but the correct answer is position only and not on the path okay which of the following is a non-renewable source of energy you have solar wind hydro now you can renew wind and solar you can renew hydro but you cannot renew coal so the correct answer to this question is coal coal is a non-renewable once you use coal you've used it you can't renew it okay now a rocket of mass 40 kg propelled by a force of 10 newton acquires a speed of 3000 meter. 
determine the power expended. Now, power is equal to energy expended. Power is equal to energy expended all over time taken. Are you getting it now? Now, power is equal to, there are different forms of energy. We have potential, which is what? MGH, they will now say all over time. Now, we also know that energy expended, the same thing as work done. So, we can say power is work done all over time. And we know that work done is force times distance. So, we can say power is force times distance all over time. And we also know that if power is force times distance all over time, distance over time is the same thing as what? Speed. So, we can say power is force times distance over time is the same thing as what? Speed. So, we can say power is equals to force times speed okay power is equals to force times speed or force times velocity when you're talking about the vector part of it okay so power is force times velocity or force times speed now i said if rockets of mass forty thousand gram propelled by a force we know that power is force times velocity or speed now the force is 10 raised to the power of six times Velocity or the speed is 3,000 meters per second. So we say times 3,000 meter per second. Then when you calculate this, it's going to give you P as 3 times. When you multiply this and this, it will give you 10 raised to the power of 9 watts. So the correct answer to this is 3 times 10 raised to the power of 9 watts. 3 times 10 raised to the power of 9 watts. 3 times 10 raised to the power of 9 watts. Okay? That is the solution to that question. Let's look at the next. An ID machine is one with efficiency of what? ID machine is one with efficiency of 100%. But there's no machine with efficiency of 100%. When you say something is ideal, it means it ought to be like that. But it's not. Let's say somebody say, this is the ID thing you ought to do. It means this is what you're supposed to do. But you didn't do it. So when you say an ideal machine, it means that this is what the machine is supposed to do. But due to some circumstances or some conditions surrounding it, it is not always up to 100% efficiency. So an ideal machine is a machine with what? Efficiency of 100. This is how it's supposed to be. Are we getting it now? So that is that. Now the last question. If there are five pulleys in a block and tackle system, the velocity ratio is what? Now, for block and tackle... For block and tackle, for block and tackle, tackle not take. For block and tackle system, the velocity ratio is always equal to the number of pulleys. So if it has five pulleys, it means velocity ratio is equal to five. Now if it has three pulleys, it means velocity ratio will be what? Three. If it has four pulleys, it means velocity ratio will be what? Four. If it has six pulleys, it means velocity ratio will be what? Six. If it has um, a masoma pulley, it means velocity ratio will be what? A masoma. Is that understood? So that is how to go about these 10 questions. So tomorrow, we await our next 10 questions in physics. Thank you for your time as we prepare much for the exam. If you know you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and also turn on the notification button so that you'll be notified whenever we post a new video. Thank you for your time. And we we'll see you in our next video. Thank you.